All right, so it is week five. That means that our exams are upon us. So they're not this week, but they're next week, right? So I will be releasing a practice exam tonight. Um, so I want to talk about what you guys should expect and also why, you know, something I see sometimes. So one second. All right, so I happen to go on some, you know, I happen to go on a lot of the same websites you do, including Reddit. And one of the things on program on the programmer humor subreddit is all about like why do you know why do uh, professors give their exams their coding exams on paper, right? Because that's the way you're going to be you're going to be doing your exam on paper, um, as opposed to on a computer. Now some professors like uh, Professor Jupin here does like to do uh, their exams their coding exams on com on actual computers. I prefer to do it on paper, and there's a couple reasons for that that I just want to explain. The first is has, has to do with syntax. Um, being on paper allows you to kind of skip past some syntax errors. So say you forget uh, to put, for say you forget to, uh, you know, uh, you know, put a colon where you need to put a colon, or you forget, or you accidentally drop a parenthesis somewhere, or you accidentally um, you know, capitalize something you shouldn't have, right? If you're trying to run that, you know, on your computer to make sure that it works during an exam, that could, you know, you could waste like 10, 20 minutes just trying to figure out something pretty simple. I don't want you to waste time with that kind of stuff. So paper allows me, allows me to just say, okay, okay, you made a minor syntactical mistake. Worst case, I'm just going to take off one point out of 10, right? You know, that, that's not too, it's not too much to worry about there. Um, the second is that it's easier for me to grade and therefore it's easier for me to get back to you in a reasonable amount of time. Um, the third is that if you forget how to do uh, things, you can sometimes write pseudocode, um, you know, and explain your algorithm. Like, I don't necessarily know how to phrase it, but here's my, you know, the way I wanna, I would want to solve the problem, right? And that kind of thing. Um, also, you might go, oh, I don't know what the function to do this is, but I know one exists and I'm just going to call it Bob, right? So if I Bob this, it's going to turn it into a string, right? Obviously, that's str, but, you know, you know something exists, you forget what the name is, you didn't put it on your cheat sheet, you know, that, those kind of, so that's part of the reason why. Uh, also, from a practical standpoint, it's just also very hard to monitor, like, you know, 30 screens all at once, right? So from a practical standpoint, it's easier for us to proctor uh, paper exams. Um, so let's talk about the, so your exam is on paper. Um, let me just pull up the front matter from uh, my previous exam. So let's go ahead and see. Intro to, yeah, pra let's go over the old practice. I'm just gonna show you briefly what the pra old practice exam looks like. I'm going to modify this so it's that's better suited for the practice exam uh, that, you know, for the exam that you're going to actually be getting. But one thing to note is notice that the points add up to 105. Okay? So that's the first thing. I kind of put in an automatic five-point curve, which is that basically you can miss five points on the exam and still get 100. There's five too many points on the exam. Okay? Right, and it's not, we're not doing weird fractional things. It's out of 100, so it's possible to score over 100 on this exam. But five points are just kind of baked in. So if you miss 15 points, right, you're still getting a 90, which is still an A, right? So it's five extra points automatically baked in. Think of it as five extra credit points just somewhere hidden throughout the exam. Uh, it allows me to just, it allows me to do away with having a curve a, a lot of the times. It ends up, you know, it ends up working out pretty well. Um, and then on the back page, I will have notes over here, including lists of useful functions in Python. Let's see, for exam one, do I have any? Let's see, boop. Exam one, at the end of this one, right, I say, here, math.square root returns this. Hello there gives you, the slice notation gives you this, right? We didn't go over a string slice, we went over briefly string slice, slice notation, but I don't think it's going to feature too heavily on the exam. 
Um, if it does, I will let you know in the practice exam, right? You'll know. The practice exam is an excellent proxy for the actual exam, right? Furthermore, we do have, um, if you happen to give us what we call exceptional answers, the graders, which are your TAs and me, ha do have the, you know, the, we have the option of adding extra credit points up to a maximum of five points per an exam to your grade. So if you put something in that's really interesting, you ask a good question on the exam, we can give you points. You find a mistake on the exam, we might give you a point, right? That kind of stuff. So that kind of stuff exists. You make me laugh, I might give you a hundredth of a point, right? So, so, so there are things there. So if you end up getting like a weird grade that's just like 0.97, you know, something, 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 0.973, you, that's because uh, I either took off points for a very, very minor thing, but you'd be surprised how well it's, how effective t uh, a, a taking off a hundredth of a point for a syntactical thing gets your attention on that syntactical thing. Um, all right, so um, now as far as what do you get to bring to the exam, the answer is a cheat sheet, right? You get a cheat sheet. Uh, it is letter or A4 sized, right? Either of, those are, are, oh, either of those sizes work for your piece of paper, so your standard printer paper, letter being United States standard, and A4 if you're in many of the other countries. Um, you can do front and back, and I don't care what you put on it. You can make it uh, handwritten, or you can make it, um, or you can make it, you know, typed. I'm not re I don't really care. Okay. Um, you know, but but you're pretty much given leeway on that because I find making a cheat sheet helps students a whole lot. Um, and because also I'm testing you on application, not necessarily, um, not necessarily you know, memorization. So one thing you don't, so it's, oh, it's perfectly okay for you to like on your cheat sheet have some of your homework there, right? To have like, you know, copy down your homework on, uh, and put it on your cheat sheet for reference. What you'll have issues with is if you just basically directly copy paste your homework into the exam, right? Oh, it's on my notes, I'm gonna write down my homework in the hopes that it's gonna solve that problem. It's never that simple. Um, Never as simple as just copying down the magic thing that you already have down. So please keep that in mind, right? I'm actually going to test you for application. Now, some things from your homework may be useful and able to be copied, but, but uh, you know, not everything. All right, so basically we'll go over everything up to and including some turtle stuff, mainly because turtles are very good tools for um, our, our stuff. Um, oh, right, when is your exam? That's also an important thing. Your exam is in your lab. So that, so whenever your lab period is, that's when your exam is. Um, Wednesday or Thursday, right, next week. So that's when your exam is, Wednesday or Thursday next week. If you have to make an alternative arrangement, say uh, because you need uh, b because you're, you need disability resource services, please send me, me you know, do that the, uh, you know, through the official channels. If you need to like, if for some reason uh, you need to miss my exam, send me an email as soon as freaking possible. Um, basically, so long as you send me an email before your exam starts, we can do stuff. It's uh, so like, oh no, I have a flat tire. I can't make it to the exam. Shoot me an email. Okay, take it tomorrow, right? That kind of stuff. Oh God, I'm sick. I don't want you showing up sick and like bombing the exam because you're sick. We'll arrange in another time. Uh, we, but makes up, make up exams are made on a case by case basis, but you need to reach out to me before the, beforehand, not afterhand, right? Obviously if you're incapacitated, right, then you know. It, it, I, again, the don't be a jerk policy applies here. So, so long as you give me heads up, like, oh, I'm going to be out of town, oh, I've got an athletic event, so on and so forth, I can work with you. All right. So, any other questions? This will be one of two exams plus a final. So, um, all right. So, let's go ahead and review turtles. So, the first thing we want to do is, so I believe I posted the latest homework. Um, there's four turtle questions on there. 
So let's just go ahead and we're going to write some functions using turtles this time. So first I'm going to import turtle over here. Now that import statement is actually, again, pretty useful. The import statement allows you to basically get, new, um, basically get a library that's already been written in Python. Basically, it allows you to use code that somebody else wrote that's not normally loaded into your Python module. For instance, here's another um, very classical import statement. Import math, which has all sorts of useful math functions, like, um, let's see, I'm going to go ahead and print math.sqrt10, or sorry, let's go with 100, where that's the square root, where that's the function for a square root. Right? The square root of 100 is 10. Right? Most programs, you don't necessarily need the square root function. But here it is in the math library if you need it. Um, here's one. Again, not every function, not everything needs it. Math.cos. Can you take a guess what that is? That's your cosine function, right? There you go. You can do some trigonometry homework there. Um, so that's where all the things you need. Um, it's actually very... Uh, Let's see, is it arc sine? I can't remember. No attribute arc sin. I don't remember what it's called. You've got sine, but you have sine, you have the inverses, the arc sine, uh, you have tangent, right? You have all the mathematical functions you would want you would want in math. Um, and usually the one you care about is math.square root, um, because square root comes up fairly often. Um, but basically it's a module and what this is is that say, we're saying that from the math program I would like to use the sine function that they wrote okay so for instance how does that work in practice like over here um, let's go ahead and make a new um, a new file over here call and I'm gonna call it and I'm going to put it in the same folder as everything else. And I'm going to call it um, mylib.py, all lowercase. And I'm just going to give it a function. And I'm just going to create a function in it. Def foo, sorry, actually def spam, right, because we're in Python over here. And it will print eggs. Okay? That's all it's going to do. That's all that's, all that's in there. And now I'm going to go back to more turtles and import my lib. Short for my library. Okay, great. No fun. I was worried that wouldn't work. But anyway, my lib.foo, which would allow me to call the foo function. I Sorry, not foo, right? We called it spam. Run it, and it prints eggs. Right? Where's, where is that spam function? Well, it's in this file over here. Well, how do I know what, where it came from? Well, I told it to import my, my lib. And what it does is it looks in the same folder and it says, is there a library called my lib? Okay, if not, I'm going to look in, the, in, in your Python installation for that, for that library, right? So it's very easy to make your own libraries and very easy to distribute them. And we're going to learn more about that later on when we work with Excel documents and the like that we'll, you'll have to install something. Uh, but that's no problem. But basically, that's, I just wanted to show you that's what's happening. You don't need to know that for the exam. We're pretty much never going to do that again, but I wanted to let you know, give you a bit of, more insight into what's happening there. All right, back to turtles. So importing a turtle. Um, so we've imported a turtle, and let's go ahead and write our main function. def main, and we'll do a main over here. And we're going to create a new turtle. Again, I'm going to call it Bob because I like how short Bob is. It's a very short name. Turl dot, and this is a special type of function over here called a constructor, which tells me to build a new turtle. Okay, so if we run this now, watch what happens. Now, you may have just noticed there uh, that, that it kind of just flickered for a second, that the window came up and then it's gone. Right, watch it again. Boom, right, it's gone. Okay. If you didn't catch it, don't worry, you can watch it in the video. Um, so that flicker over there is that basically it said, let's create a new turtle. It displayed the turtle. Okay, we're done displaying the turtle. So 
You'll also notice that basically when I say we, we run our programs, we wanted to, when we run turtle programs, we also want to put in a turtle dot done over here. And that's be, what that does is that it says, okay, we're done, but you know, please keep that up. Right? So that's why our turtle programs will always end with done. All right? Um, next, let's go ahead. I like tr uh, Bob being a different shape. So Bob dot um, set shape, I believe. How uh, was it? Set. Let's just check my old file because guess what? Oh, Bob dot shape. Bob dot shape. And we can tell it a shape. We can also, Im as you'll s see in a future assignment, we can also import a, um, we can import a, a shape, a custom shape that we want to make and make that and, ma and turn Bob into that shape. But I want to make him a you know turtle shape because this is turtles, right? It should look like a turtle. All right, so we've got we've set up our turtle, and now we're going to just start writing functions um, the way I want you to do them for the homework which is that we're going to just create new functions over here and we're going to let Bob into those we're going to tell we're going to let Bob do those functions. So let's just go ahead and um, write something simple. Uh, draw square, right? Something that we've already done here, but we're doing it in a bit of a different way. And here we're passing in Bob as a parameter. Right? We're we're tossing our turtle to a function to and now we'll just tell him to We'll just go ahead and actually uh, have him move forward just to show that this works. Um, move forward 100. So tell Bob to move forward 100. And now what we do is that we say, draw square. What are we going to draw the square with? We're going to draw the square with Bob. That's what we're going to draw it with, right? So Bob gets passed to this function, right? And we move that. Now the names don't have to match, right? You can be. Uh, you know, he can you know he can be Bob in this in Maine, and he could be uh, Todd in here, right? Right, it's just a variable name, right? But it's still the same turtle. What we've done is that we've copied the memory location of this turtle into this function. We've taken this turtle and copied his. A memory location into here. What that means is basically we can now talk to the turtle from this function. And basically that means that we can kind of divide the different commands we want to do. Right, so let's go ahead and tell Todd how we want to move. Right, a square is fairly simple. Um, we tell, it's basically just four commands back to back. 4x in range 4, right? We tell it to move forward a set number of times and then, then we tell it to turn. Todd dot RT for right turn. Oh, 90 degrees, right? And ta-da, right? We drew a square. Okay, makes sense to everybody so far, right? And the nice thing about this is that this allows us to basically say, okay, I want to do this function, but I can leave the code up here and I don't have to erase it. That's kind of the point there that I, I can write these things and I don't have to erase them or make a giant mess like I was doing over here, right? All right, so now the other fun thing that's very simple to do with turtles besides drawing a basic shape is to draw, as we saw last time, spirals. So draw square spiral. Now, what makes a spiral spiral? What makes it a spirally shape is the fact that basically that every time we go around a bit more, every time the turtle moves, he just moves a bit more, right? So we use it, so if to draw a square spiral, right, all the sides are the same. All, every time he moves, he moves 100. But if he were to do a square spiral, he moves a bit more than 100. He moves a bit more than 100, then a bit more than, uh, than last time, and then a bit more than the time before that, and then a bit more than the time before that. All right, let's go ahead and see what I mean. So 4x in range um, 50. Well, that's a bit much. 10. We're going to go ahead and say Bob 
dot forward. We're going to tell him to move forward 100, but not just move forward 100, but 100 plus x times 10. <coughs> right? Now I'm using that x variable over here. Right? So the first time through, it will be 0, then it'll be 1, then it'll be 2. Bob.rt90. OK? Um, so let's go ahead and say draw square spiral. So I want us to note the uh, changes that I've made. OK, I'll go ahead and just change this back to 4 to begin with, even though that's not going to be particularly interesting. The only change that I've made, aside from it being named Bob here and Todd there, right, is that I've added plus x times 10, right? So I'm, again, I'm just going over stuff that we went over last time, but I want to get a better understanding of this. Oh, invalid syntax. I need to put a colon over there. All right, so look, so we ended up with a different result. Let's go ahead and slow him down, okay? So I think I can do that with bob.speed is equal to turtle.speed is equal to, and then the, lo then the higher the number, the lower the speed. So let's try 8. Oh, no, that, that, I, I think that was faster. Okay, maybe the lower the number, the slower. Yes, there we go. That's pretty slow. Okay, so first he moved this way. Then he moved a bit more down this way. All right, let's go ahead and keep that up. And what I'll do is I'll run draw square over here, and then we're going to compare the two. Let's compare the two figures. Okay, whoops. And shoot. Okay, so let's go ahead and compare these two guys, these two figures. Okay, so we've got this over here and this over here. Now, it may be a bit difficult to notice, but this top line over here is the same length as the top line over here. But this one over here is a bit longer, and this one over here is a bit longer, and then this one over here is a bit, is a bit longer than that. We can uh, magnify the difference by, um, by, let's see, going ahead and, whoops, got too many things that are open. Let's go ahead and magnify the difference a bit more. Draw sp square spiral. And we're going to change this instead of being 10 times x, we're going to do this as 100 times x. That really magnifies that difference. OK. Right? This is the same over here as over here. But obviously, this over here is longer. Now, why is that? It has to do with the structure of the for loop. The for loop said we move forward x plus, we move forward 100 plus x times 100. So it moved forward, so this time x was, so the first time x was 0, so it just moved forward 100. Then x was 1, so it moved forward x times 100, so 1 times 100 plus 100. So it moved forward a total of 200. That looks roughly twice as long, right? Then we had x times uh, 2, and then we had x times 3. But each time, but why is it a square? Well, it's a square because each time we, we asked the turtle to move, we had him turn 90 degrees. That's why we're drawing a square spiral. OK? So let's go ahead and now make the square spiral a bit bigger, right? 50, right? So now since the turtle's going to move more times, it will be longer, right? And it'll also take a long time because I still have the seed, uh, speed set a bit more. But each time, he goes a bit longer. He goes 10 pixels more, right? 10 pixels more, 10 pixels more, 10 pixels more, 10 pixels more. So that's why this keeps winding like that, right? So making a square spiral is not too hard, right? Now, let's go ahead and ask, how would I make a triangular spiral? 
what would need to be changed from this if I wanted to draw a triangle spiral, right? So for squares, we draw, we go 90 degrees each time, right? Because 490 degrees equals 360, right? Which is the amount of times you need to go in order to end up back where you were. So triangles have three sides. So how many turns do they need to make? They need to make three turns. So how, so what is the, so for a triangle spiral, what should be my right turn length? 120. Not 60, right, sounds great because, right, the a tr triangle adds up to 180. But those are the inner angles, right? For the turtle, with the way he's moving, right, with the way he's moving, he's got to go, turn, turn, he's got to move, and then he's got to turn not 60, but 180, sorry, one, but 120 degrees, then turn, then turn another 120 degrees, and then turn another 120 degrees. Right, because that will add up to a total of 360. So there, whoops. Now it's drawing the square again because it's doing what I told it to do, to draw the square spiral. I didn't change the function call down here. Draw triangle spiral. So now run, and now there we go. And it's, spir it's drawing a triangular spiral. All right. All right, so let's talk a bit more about what our turtle can do. So one thing I mentioned near the end of the class was the stamp function. And the stamp function is very useful for a number of things, um, which is like if I wanted to draw a row of stuff. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. Uh, def draw, um, draw row. And let's go, I'll just go ahead and write it and we'll see what this does. 4x in range um, 10. Bob dot forward. Bob, let's see. Bob dot pen up. Bob dot stamp, Bob dot pen up, Bob dot forward, um, twenty. And then, okay. So let's go ahead and see draw row. Hopefully, I didn't mess this up too much. Let's see what he does. Well, that's interesting. Let's go ahead and change this to 50 to make it a bit more apparent. I just drew a row of turtles. All right, how did that work? So the first thing we do, so let's go ahead and talk about this, this stamp command. The stamp command, basically, right, so the entire mechanism of the turtle is imagine the turtle's dragging a pen in his mouth or from his tail, right, and just dragging this pen on this white canvas behind him, right? The stamp, uh, the stamp command is a bit different. It says imagine the turtle has his belly full, uh, you know, he's, he's, the bottom of his belly is covered with ink, and whenever we tell him to stamp, he does a little belly flap on the, on the paper and covers that portion of the ink with ink. So what we did is that we told him to move, is that we told him to go and stamp it, right? Stamp your current position, then make sure your pen is up, right? It might already be up, but in case it's not, bring your pen up so that you don't drag it. And then move forward 50 spaces, right? And the thing is, is that if you tell him to move his, with his, without the pen up, right? This is the way it would look. He would drag his pen as well as stamping, right? You'd have a turtle with, you know, this line over here. So he would stamp, we tell him to bring his pen up, then we tell him to move forward 50 spaces. And at the end of this, I'll actually add a bob dot pen down, just to make sure, you know, right, because the default position for a turtle is to have his pen down. Right? So we tell him to stamp, move forward 50 spaces, 
right, let's go ahead and actually change that to 40. All right, and see how this works. So how many turtles are there? There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. All right, but I told Bob to make ten stamps. Why are there eleven? Why are there eleven turtles? Because one of them is Bob. Right, one of them's Bob. This is Bob over here. Right, we can tell. We can. We can. We can show you by by telling him Bob dot uh, right turn. Uh, 90 degrees, right? So there are 10 stamps. It just looks like there were 11 because one of them was Bob. Right? There he is. We told him to turn right. Okay. So, because he's ready to do his next command. Okay, so we can do something interesting like this, and it makes it pretty useful to like, um, to like show, you know, for example, nested for loops. Okay, um, so let's go ahead and see how could I do a how can I draw like not just a row of turtles, but like a small grid of turtles. Let's go ahead and think about that. So, def draw grid bob for x in range 10. Let's go ahead and say we want 10, right? We want 10. Let's go ahead and call this rows. For how many, however many rows we want, right? What do we want to do? We want to go ahead and for x in range ten, Bob dot stamp, Bob dot pen up. We don't actually. We only actually need the pen up one in one place, right? Because he won't. Well, he'll keep it up until we put a pen down. So we'll tell ben, Bob that pen up over there. Bob dot stamp. Bob dot forward. Um, let's go ahead and do twenty this time around. And you know what? This is actually pretty useful to show you what's going to go on over here right now. Oh wait. It's going to run the same thing. It's going to run the previous thing because I did not change it over here, right? Computer's an evil genie, right? We'll do exactly what you tell it to do. So run it, draw a grid, right? And it's actually just going to keep going until it produces 100 stamps. Why is that? Because so it's going to produce 100 stamps in total, right? And the reason being is that what we told it to do is that I want you to repeat this block. 10 times. Repeat this block 10 times. And that block is stamp, tw move 20, 10 times. So 10 times 10, grand total of 100. All right. But if I want it to be like a grid, then when I move forward with a row, then I would really like it if my turtle actually, you know, if Bob actually, you know, did what he was supposed to. So. Um, and go on to another line. All right. So in that case, I'm going to go ahead and remove this over here. First off, um, let's actually, we'll leave that for later. So what we'll do is that we'll say Bob dot right, right to turn him right 90 degrees. Bob dot forward. Um, we're going to move him forward, let's say, 40. And Bob dot, let's see, so he's pointing down right now, right? So he was pointing to the right. He's pointing down right now. We told him to move, move forward 40. So now we want to turn him right again. 
And now we are going to move him back the way he came. Bob dot right and then how far did how far did we travel we traveled 20 times 10 right that'll be important later and then we need oh that's not right that's forward and then Bob dot turn 180 degrees all right let's see let's see how badly I did this oh turtle object is no no attribute turn it's a right it's all repetition that's all this is that's all this is it's just repetition Okay. Yep. I'm going to run this slower. Okay. Bob dot speed one. And now let's go ahead and run this. So he goes down, he turns right, he turns right again, turns himself around, and starts making stamps. So what we're saying is we're, let's go ahead and draw these 10 things. Right. Now, if I know you, you hate nested for loops, right? Now, the answer is to this is to make it uh, is to is to cheat. Don't make it nested, or if you're going to nest it, hide the nesting. Um, to make it less complex, right? There's one thing that uh, that the hacker mentality hates. It is um, it is repeating work, right? Let's take a look at this. Look at this. Bob dot draw a row is like the same code we have over here. So let's delete this and do uh, Bob dot. Instead, we'll just call draw row Bob over here. So we're going to repeat the following ten times. Tell Bob to draw a row, or sorry, draw a row with Bob. Then tell Bob to move right ninety degrees forward. Um, now, you might be wondering, why do I have to do it like this and the rest of these like these? Well, the rest, because these are functions that are written inside turtle, and this is the function written here, right? So, draw a row, then, uh-oh. Don't worry, that was intentional on my part. Looks like Bob's got a bit of a mind of his own, right? No, actually, it's doing, again, exactly what I told him to do, right? So draw row tells Bob to move forward 40 10 times, OK? But we didn't change that. We uh, instead told him move right, then so turn to the right. Move down 40 degrees to so you're in position to the next row, and now we need to move you to the big. You're at the end of the next row. We need to move you to the beginning of the next row. So turn another another uh, 90 degrees right. Right, that makes sense to everybody. Do these three steps over here make sense, or do I need to go over them for people? Right, what you're doing here is that you were going this way. Okay, then Bob turns this way so we can move down a row, and then he turns this way, another, another right, 90 degrees right, so we can start going this way, so we can get to the beginning of the row. And then he turns right 180, which I can't really, there we go. Um, so, so he turns this way, so that he can um, start moving forward, so we can, so that when we call bo uh, draw row Bob again, he can start moving forward again. Right, so now, right, we moved forward 40 over here, which means that we're going to move 40 over here. Now, one thing, this actually goes into something, which is the whole idea of magic numbers, right? I have these 40s in here and these 20s, and it's very easy to get them mixed up, right? So the answer to, to making sure we don't have these is to have variables instead. Right? There we go. So we're telling Bob, draw a row, then move down, move back, Draw a row, move down, move back, draw a row, 
turn, move down, turn, move back, turn around, right? That's pretty cool, yeah. All right, so let's go ahead and start making these things a bit more, a, a bit more modular, a bit more, um, more, um, you know, easier. Num stamps. So I'm going to add a parameter to draw a row, which is how many stamps do I want, right? How many stamps do I want on that row? Okay. And then distance, which is basically the two things here. How many stamps do I want? This one said I'd like ten, and this one and distance is how far apart they were. So instead, I'll put num stamps over here and distance over here. Now to test this out in the draw grid, instead of just doing draw row Bob, I'm going to tell you how many stamps do I want. Um, let's go with, well, let's go ahead and say I'd like five stamps per row, and I'd like them to be 50 apart. Five stamps. Oh, <laughs> what did you do there? Well, they are now 50 apart, but, right, again, we told it to move 200 back, right? So obviously, maybe we want to put some variables over here too, which is uh, num rows, num calls, sorry, or let's go ahead and call it instead of that something a bit easier. Stamps per row, right? And distance. All right, so in this case, what I'll do is I'll say, how many rows do I want? I want num rows, makes sense. Okay, I'm gonna draw that row. How many stamps do I want per the row? I'm gonna replace it with stamps per row. And how far are you going to go? Distance. All right. Now to fix this thing, which has been a um, pain, the total number of, the amount of distance that I've traveled should be equal to distance times the stamps per row. Does that make sense to everybody? Right? Stamps per row means how many times this repeats. So now if I run this, after I modify this, let's say I want Bob, I'd like 10 rows, 10 stamps per row, and I'd like 100 pixels between each stamp, which is a bit far. Let's go ahead and see what happens. Come back. Right? There we go. So now it's a lot more modular. We can use it to draw a lot more things. Um, now the vertical distance is still separated by 40 because we don't, because we've been we had that hard coded in. It's not a parameter. It's just simply a magic number in there that these are 40 apart. Make sense to everybody? So we can change that as well. Um, like distance between stamps. Or let's call it instead maybe something a bit shorter. Stamp distance. Or stamp dist. Row dist. Right? So how far apart every row is. And then stamp distance goes with stamps per row. Match them up. And now if I do 100 by 100... Whoops, distance is not defined. Where did I change that? Aha! Right? Gotta remember if you're changing your variables, you gotta change all the variables. Doop, 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 doop. And he's off the screen again. But he moved down a bit further this time. So now it's much more. Now look, they're much more in a square formation now. Right? That's pretty cool. All right. So 
All right. So that's pretty cool. I'm going to go ahead and copy this and use it for another thing because honestly, when it started being a bit off center, that looked pretty cool. So let's go ahead and write a new one just by copying and pasting, but we're going to call this jagged grid. All right. And this one's going to be a bit interesting. Like I want kind of a crosshatch pattern here. Basically, it's going to be a bit staggered. So let's see. And the answer that, to that over there is that um, how far we want him to move. So um, let's see what happens basically if um, we tell. So let's go. Let's just go ahead and experiment over here. So stamps per row. So stamp distance plus stamps per row plus, right, and this is how we have fun, we experiment, plus um, 10 times rows. Actually, I'll call that row because it's just one row, right, times whatever row it is. So now if I do this and say jagged grid, Let's see what happens. It's not going to change too much. Jagged grid grid. It is the, okay, so let's go ahead and see. Moves forward. And then he's going to move forward all the way back over here, except, oh, did it change it all? Maybe. Oh, looks like it did a bit. Right, it looks like this guy's a bit further back than this guy. So it's not like it's lined up perfectly. How interesting. In fact, each time over here, we're moving 10 more pixels back. This first one didn't go because it was because he moved back exactly zero um, extra pixels this time. So we can actually do something interesting if I can like make it move 10 this way and then 10 then then this way right if we alternate that so let's go ahead and see that so um, if I tell it to move let's say if so this means that we're switching what we do whether row is every other row so if row mod 2 equal equal 0 so if we're on an even count um, I'd just like us to move, um, you know, an extra 10 steps. Let's go ahead and say 10. Otherwise, else, row, we would just do what we normally do. Let's see what happens there. It's probably not going to be what I wanted to do. Oh, and let's speed it up now. Um, oh, those are the same condition too, which is why I stopped it as well. Let's go ahead and speed it up to 10 so it goes fast. And it's a bit more, let's, we gotta turn the dimensions down a bit on this one to see it. Let's go ahead and make it a 40 by 40 and make it five by five. Right, now you need to see why I have variables like this. Not really what I wanted. It's getting, it's still, it's a bit cross-hatched, but it's moving this way. So let's go ahead and see what happens if I subtract 10 this time. Oh, there we go. So let's go ahead and then see, uh, I'm making this 10 by 10 again, and then we get, let's go ahead and make it again, 40 by 40. It's like very fast turtle over there. Okay, so what we did is that we said move for, draw your row like normal, 
Then when you go down, move an extra 10 pixels. Okay, move an extra 10 pixels, and then he drew, turned around and drew his row. Then he moved down, and then he said, move an extra, move an extra negative 10 pixels. In other words, don't move to move 10 less pixels than, than, than you would normally move. So rather than lining up, it stopped where with in, and got in line with the other one. And it moved, we drew another, then we drew our row, we told it to move down to the next row, then we told it to move an extra 10 pixels again. Right, so we add so what's going on over here is that we added 10 over here and then we cancel out the 10 we added every other row. Does that make sense to everybody? I feel like I lost some people here. So, right, what we did is that every other row, he's moving an extra step back, right? And then every other, and then he'll move an extra 10 steps uh, less. So, right, so the idea here is that if the turtle starts, let's say, over here, he is moving, right, draws a row like normal, right, and then he moves down, and then he moves an extra 10 steps back, so he ends up behind where he started last time. And then he starts drawing again, the normal amount, but he stops, and now he'll, because he moved an extra 10 steps back, he stops here, right before he was about to uh, the point where he's, that he stopped last time. So he moves down, goes to the next row, runs into a chair apparently, um, and then he moves forward, and he doesn't end up over here because this time we're telling him to move 10 steps less. So he ends up in line with where he started initially. Does that help uh, clarify matters? Right. So that's the whole difference between the 10 and the negative 10 over here, and those parentheses aren't really needed. Right? So this ends up being a, jag a jagged thing. Now, if I didn't have the negative 10 over here, right, what happens is we just end up getting this, right? Where it knows that these two are in line, 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 and, and so on and so forth. And they keep moving further back. Right. So that's your stamp um, function. And that's a, it's a pretty nice and useful function um, for basically just drawing things like that. Let's see. All right. Do, do, do. So let's go ahead and then make these. So, however, you know this this it's more fun if we actually now start adding some um, color into the mix, which is where we stop. Where I, I started talking about that last time, right? Which is um, so we can change Bob's color, right? Bob dot pen color is equal to. Uh, let's go ahead and say it's red, right? We can just tell it red as a string, and it'll understand. Except it doesn't. It's, if you can notice, though, it's red outlined. Pen color changes Bob's outline, and whenever he moves, let's go ahead and um, actually um, remove the pen up command. Whenever he moves, well, actually, removing the pen up command doesn't do anything over here because guess what? We have a pen up command over here. Just changes his outline. So to actually change Bob's color, we change him and we have to say turn into red. Bob color is equal to red. Okay? And that changes both him and the outline into red. So, now when we talked about it, basic, when we talked about color last time, the way colors work for, um, for this is that you can pretty much put in, let's see, we can put in, I think, uh, FF00FF, zero zero FF. let's see if this works. Yep. So you can put in a color command where basically you're saying, I'd like this much I'd like 255 red, that's what FF is in hexadecimal, zero 
Is it red, green, blue, or is it red? This is it's red, green, blue. Okay. Right, so then zero is green. And then I'd like 255 blue. Right. The what? So run it again, and boom, right, it's purple because this is the maximum amount of red and blue added together. It gives you this eye searing purple. Right? However, static, so we can do that. Let's see what else. Would it understand green? Yes, it understands green. It understands pretty much all your primary colors. Um, but the other way to do it is to mix custom amounts of color, right? I can say I would like, from, on a scale of 0 to 1, I'd like 0 0.5 blue, a smidge of green, sorry, 0 to 5 red, sorry, half red, smidge of green, and then a lot of blue. Right. So let's go ahead and see, see how we can play with that. Let's go ahead and say, now Bob's colors start off as 0, 0, 0, if I recall correctly. Let's go ahead and test that theory. 0, 0, 0, I if I recall correctly, and it's possible I don't, is black, right? Absence of any color added, right? It's actually, you know, so color models are weird like that. So. Okay, so what we can do is that we can add color as we go on. So say we, uh, the, say, uh, the, the further uh, in the row we get, we'd like to add more red. So Bob dot color is equal to um, row times 0 0.1 amount of red and no blue and no green. Let's go ahead and run this and see what happens. So at the start of each row, we tell them to get a bit more red. Right? We get, ask them to get one-tenth more red. That's pretty cool, right? And so if we go ahead and then we do 20 lines, 20 rows, Right, number rows, then he's gonna get really red, I suppose. Let's go ahead and make, yeah. Let's go ahead and run that. 20 red. Looks like he got so red he crashed the program. What was the, what's the issue? Read the, read the error up there. What did the error say? Yes. It can't go above one. Bad color sequence. 1.1 1 .1 red. Right? 1.1 1 .1 red. Right? I said it's from zero to one. Can't go above one red. Right? He got so red he got embarrassed. So what we gotta do is then we wanna make it, we wanna normalize this, right? Since there's gonna be 20 rows, maybe we should add go up a twentieth at a time, right? So row times one over num rows. That seems a bit weird, but that basically we're saying if this is 20, it's going to be 1 20th. If it's 100, it's going to be 100th, right? This basically helps normalize it. And so he's going to go up a bit more slowly red now, right? not going to crash anymore, but he's gone off a bit far off the screen. Let's go ahead and actually fix that. What we're going to tell, before we do this, we're going to go ahead and tell, let's go ahead and tell Bob to move before we do all this, because right now he's at the center of the screen. So let's go ahead and say, Bob, go to, um, go to negative 100, positive 100.
Now you can use the go to command to move him wherever we want to go, wherever he wants to be. Uh, notice that that little line there is at zero zero, right? And that's because again he had his pen down. So we can tell him to go maybe to. Right. Remember, we're in, in the coordinate plane. We just haven't drawn it, right? So if I go, if I tell him to go negative 500, 500, before we start doing any of this stuff, right? There we go. And now we won't crash the program. Excellent. Okay. So. That's great. Um, let's go ahead and though, I want to take a look at one more of our examples. One more example that I have over here, variable six. Changing line color. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's go ahead and um, do one more, uh, a couple more as we're going. Uh, def um, to spiral. All right, so let's go ahead and t we're just going to do, we're going to go back to, and say Bob over here. All right, I think we've we've had enough fun with the grid for right now. All right, so again, we're going to do the for loop over here. For i in range 50, and yes, I am relying off of sheets that I have. Um, Bob dot forward. Let's go ahead and comment this out over here. Bob dot forward. Fifty steps, and now we're going to tell him to move um, Bob dot left, turn left, one hundred and twenty-three degrees. That's a bit weird. All right. Oh, and we're, let's go ahead and say Bob dot uh, pen color is equal to blue in this case. All right. We're just going to turn Bob blue over here. Maybe he's down because of all the weather. It's pretty bad out there, right? Uh, two spiral bob. And let's go ahead and write. So all I have to do to not draw our jagged thing that we've been working on is just comment out that code. So it's a lot easier for you guys to, to play with this code now. So now let's just go ahead and say two spiral bob. Okay. So this isn't the end product, but let's see what he does. So this is pretty cool. Now what's going on there? It started out like he's drawing a triangle, right? Let's go ahead and magnif let's go ahead and magnify it. Enhance, right? 100, right? It's just got to draw this a bit. So remember, turning 120 degrees is a triangle. So he's turning a bit more than 120 degrees each time, right? So as a result, he's just like it looks like he's slowly drawing a triangle off of each other. But he's not actually drawing triangles. He's drawing something that's well actually no, he's not actually drawing triangles. It's just not they're not actually meeting up. But they're coming close. So that's pretty cool. Basically, he drew a bit more than that than that, right? If we did the same thing for a square, like if I drew 93, we'd get a rotating square. Right, it's a bit more apparent that you saw that the square was crooked there when we started drawing it. And so that's how you kind of get that really cool, like, uh, I don't know, that, that, this kind of paint you can get when you're spinning around something. It's really nice. All right, oh, okay, so anyway, let's go ahead and now leave this back at 123. All right, and now let's go ahead and set Bob to red, or let's set his pen color to red, right? For I in range, and we're going to do another 50 turns this time. 
and we're going to say Bob dot forward. I want to go twice as much as I went last time, so 200. And then Bob dot left. One, two, three. So this is pretty cool over here. So again, we're spinning out that, that thing that looks like a triangle, right? And then we're going to change color to red in just a second. And we're going to start going a bit further. Right? And so he just draws the same pattern but bigger over the other one. That's pretty cool. It's pretty nice and nifty over there. Um, and again, you can make him whatever color you want want him to be. Um, that's something that's pretty nice about these. Um, let's see. All right, now let's go ahead and do one more, which I'm totally stealing from this one. Um, all right, this will be the last one, and then you guys can seek shelter somewhere. Ninja Bob. All right. Uh, so Bob dot speed is going to be well. He's a ninja, so he's going to move to ten speed, right, super quickly. All right, now for I in range 180, right, this is going to actually be pretty cool. Okay, Bob dot forward, we tell him to move forward 100 steps first. Okay, Bob dot right 30, and then we're going to tell him to move Bob dot forward another 20. Oh wait, it gets better. Bob dot left turn 60. All right, so remember he moved, so he's going straight, then he moved 30 degrees this way, and then he moved 30 degrees the other way, okay? So he's moving forward, moving 30 degrees this way, this way. So it's kind of a move forward zigzag kind of idea. Okay, and then Bob dot RT, sorry, left turn, sorry, Bob dot forward 50. So he moves forward, he turns, moves forward a bit more, turns, move forward a bit more, and then we tell him to move forward 30 more degrees. So now what is Bob doing? He is facing the exact same way that he was going before that basic he's facing the exact same angle he did beforehand okay right notice that he moves right 30 left 60 right 30 so that cancels out okay so that's his movement over there bob dot pen up move his pen up bob dot set position so this is like go to, actually we can do the go to command Go to zero, zero, right? Go back to the center. Tell him to move back to the center, right? Because that's where he started. That's pretty simple. So we're just telling him to go out and do something jagged and move back to the center. And then Bob dot right turn two degrees. Repeat. And then we just repeat. Do the same thing you did, but do it two degrees off. So, yep. Yeah, Bob colon over here. So now. Uh, now let's go ahead and say Ninja Bob. Okay. Oh, wait, I forgot a command. Right, if I bring the pen up, I got to remember, put the pen down. Otherwise, it's just... Right? There we go. So, right, he's going forward 100. And then he turns right and moves 20 turns left and moves 60, but then he turns back to the same angle and goes back to the center. 
and then he turns two degrees so that he does it at a different angle. Right? And then we're asking you to do this 180 times. So, and he's moving two degrees each time, so it's going to be a full circle. Sorry, where does he put his pen down? He puts his pen down after he, after he goes back to the center, after the go-to command. Totally not my code over here, but uh, somebody else came up with this and I thought it was really good. Uh, but it just kind of shows this kind of modulation you can do with it. Um, right? And because of the closeness of the angles, it looks like we drew like a, it, there's a hint of a circle within a circle, right? Because just that's the way your eyes work, right? We look for patterns and we see what we can find in there. So how much, co how much turtle stuff are you expected to know for the exam, I suppose you're thinking? You're think yeah. Right. Because, because the stamp, we have to stamp, we use the stamp command, right? Each row he was going forward and moving the stamp command, and then that, that, that's the only time he stamped. When we moved back, we didn't tell him to do anything. Right, he's just moving. Now, you're probably wondering, how much of this stuff do I need to know for the exam? And the answer is not nearly as much as this. Uh, what I'd expect you to do something for the exam is like, you know, you know, please draw what happens, you know, as, you know, please follow, you know, let Bob be the turtle, please draw the, the shape that, uh, that Bob draws as you draw the following commands, and, the follow and all the commands tell you to draw essentially a square, right? It's going to be something along those lines, right? So pretend your pencil's the turtle and draw something like that. Or, you know, give me the commands to draw an equilateral triangle, right? Right? You know, yes? But this this over here, right? Oh yeah. So the reason we do the Bob right thirty, right, is because if we didn't have that, he'd be still he'd be still thirty degrees off of the off of his initial bearing. So let's see what happens. Right. Because he's because there those and those are all separated thirty degrees apart. And the reason that is the case is because. Um, you know, you move, again. You we, he was go, he was straight. He was dead on. Thirty degrees to the right, sixty degrees to the left, and then those initial thirty degrees bring him back center when we move him to the center. Then we tell him to move two degrees, right? And so now we just now he's just simply going over. I think the it looks like he's going over the same spots again and again. It's not as cool, um, but but that's why we 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 have we have that. Um, there. What the? All right. All right. So um, I'll see you on Thursday. On Tuesday, we will do uh, that. That entire period will be an exam. Uh, pra we'll, I'll do a run through of the practice exam on the Tuesday before your exam.